42. And we're going to read, to start off with, verse 1 through 4. And then I'll tell you where we're going to go from there. When Jacob heard that grain was available in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why are you standing around looking at one another? I have heard there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy enough grain to keep us alive. Otherwise, we'll die. So Joseph's ten older brothers went down to Egypt to buy grain, but Jacob wouldn't let Joseph's younger brother, Benjamin, go with them for fear some harm might come to him. Let's go down to verse 17. So Joseph put them all in prison for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to them, I am a God-fearing man. If you do as I say, you will live. If you really are honest men, choose one of your brothers to remain in prison. The rest of you may go home with grain for your starving families, but you must bring your youngest brother back to me. This will prove that you're telling the truth and you will not die. To this they agreed. Now the last verse, verse 24, and we're going to go to 24D as we say it. So that's like the last part of that verse. And it says, then he chose Simeon from among them and had him tied up right before their eyes. Right now. I want to preach to you for just a little while from the subject left behind. We may be seen. Left behind. When we read the chapters in Genesis that refer to the 12 sons of Jacob or later Israel, we normally focus our attention on who? Joseph. Joseph was the first son birthed out of the womb of Rachel, Jacob's favorite wife. In biblical times, men were allowed to have more than one wife, which meant you had a lot of half brothers and sisters running around the house. Well, Joseph and Benjamin were whole brothers. They had the same mother and the same father. And you know the story. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. And while in Egyptian captivity, everything he touched prospered. Why? Because God was with him. And we like to read and hear about God's awesome intervention in his life and how he found favor in the sight of everyone in Egypt, even though he was classified as a slave. We like to read about how he entered into Egypt with nothing but the clothes on his back and later had it all. And it's because most of the time we need to be reminded. Most of the time we need to hear that God is able and willing to deliver us and prosper us in any situation, no matter what's trying to hold us captive. Yeah, that's right. We need to be reminded that God can and will intercede on our behalf for Joseph way back then. But God didn't give me a sermon about Joseph today. Instead, I kept hearing Simeon. Simeon. And if the truth were told, I've never even given Simeon a second thought. I've never stopped to even think much about Simeon. I, I've never even taken the time to get to know who Simeon was. Every time I've read this section of Genesis, my attention has always been focused on Joseph. Yes. So who was Simeon? Touch your neighbor and ask, who was Simeon? Who was Simeon? Simeon was the second son born of a woman who was not loved by her husband because their union was grounded in trickery and deceit. Simeon was a man whose name meant God has heard that I'm not loved. So every time somebody called his name, he was reminded that his father didn't love him or his mother as much as he loved his other wife and his two half-brothers. 
Simeon was a man who, who took his sword and attacked the city that Shechem, the son of Hamar, lived in, killing every male in sight because Shechem had raped his baby sister, Dana. Simeon was a man of violence. He was mischievous. He was quick-tempered. His temper would go off. He had a real quick temper. He was mean and always getting into trouble. He even maimed oxen, Genesis 49, 5 says, just for the fun of it, just to see the animal die. Bye, bye, bye. Simeon was, was one of ten brothers who wanted to kill their half-brother Joseph, but sold him into slavery instead, and allowing their father to assume he was dead. Yeah. Simeon was a man who lived most of his life, no doubt, affected by the spirit of favoritism. As you know, favoritism can have a child or an adult looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah, yeah. Choosing the wrong things to bring validation to themselves and make them feel special. It can cause a child to live their entire life doing things, good or bad, just to get their parents' attention. Right. Which is why I think Simeon probably started out doing and then it just became a way of life. Yes. Favoritism affects our homes, and it even affects the church. Yeah. As we see favoritism in this particular scripture, we find out favoritism is not new. Mm -hmm. right. And favoritism has a tendency to leave destruction behind. It causes resentment. It, it activates jealousy. Uh -huh. It creates fiction. It creates a dichotomy or a division, if you will. It causes people to feel left it causes people to feel like they have no purpose. Favoritism causes pain. Yes, it does. Understand that favoritism has a tendency to go from generation to generation. Because just like Jacob showed favoritism between Joseph and his other sons, his parents, Isaac and Rebekah, showed favoritism between him and his brother Esau. And Isaac's mother, Sarah, showed favoritism between Isaac and his brother, Ishmael. So we have three generations where the spirit of favoritism was allowed to operate. You can't make people change, but you can start with yourself. So if you can, decide right now not to allow it to operate in your life. Decide not to pass it down to your children through you. Yes. And that's why God commands us in First Timothy 5.21 to do nothing. Anyway, in this chapter, we discover that a famine has come upon the land. And the only place that is overflowing with grain is Egypt. And Simeon and his brothers are sitting in the presence of their father, Jacob, when Jacob learns that Egypt is the place to go and get food. And because they knew that 13 years prior, they had sold their brother Joseph into slavery in Egypt, they were not in any hurry to go there. Because verse 1 says that Jacob says to them, why do you look at one another? In so many words, what he's saying is, what's your problem? Why are you still sitting here? Mm -hmm. Get to moving. Then you just hear daddy say, there's some food in Egypt. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and the Bible says all the brothers began to prepare for their journey to Egypt, all but one. Mm -hmm. Jacob refuses to send Benjamin, Joseph's baby brother, because he was afraid that harm might come to him. And the Bible tells us that once the brothers arrive in Egypt to buy food, they are accused of being spies. And they don't know that their accuser is their now successful brother, Joseph, that they sold into slavery 13 years earlier. And their accuser begins to question them and they begin to reveal all sorts of personal information about themselves and their family. And you know how it is if, if guilt is riding your back and, and straddling your shoulders, you have a tendency to get nervous and, and you start sweating and, and your palms might even get sweaty and you can't be still and, and you have to tell everything you know when you get cornered. <laughs> you know how little children do when they've done something they know they're not supposed to do it and, and you go to them and you know what they did and they can spill all of it tell them everybody 
<laughs> so after they tell their life story, Joseph tells them that in order to prove that they're not spies, they must go back to Canaan and bring their younger brother Benjamin back with them to Egypt to validate their story. But he says, I need to keep one of you here in prison. One of you has to remain until the others come back. One of you has to be left behind. And I suspect neither one of the brothers volunteered to stay because they may have felt in their hearts that their daddy was not going to let their baby brother, the one favored over them, come back to Egypt to validate their story no matter which brother had been left behind. Amen. And the Bible doesn't the reason why, but in verse 24, it says that Joseph took Simeon. Mm -hmm. Joseph chose who was going to stay behind. And he bound him before his brother's eyes. And then gave orders to the men working for him to fill his brother's bags with grain and give them an ample supply of food for their journey back to Canaan. And now while they're traveling back to Canaan, Simeon is sitting in prison. Yeah. And I can imagine all kinds of thoughts probably begin to run through his mind. Mm -hmm. I can see him beginning to calculate how many days it's going to take for his brothers to travel from Egypt to Canaan and back again. I, I can imagine he says, now, I know it took us approximately 21 days uh -huh. to get here, so I'm going to multiply that by two, and I'll add a few more days to that number because I know my brothers are going to have to convince my daddy to let Benjamin come back so I can be set free. So I need to have a figure in my mind to count down from. I need to have a figure in my mind to hold on to because as long as I know I've got some days remaining, as long as I've got some days left, I can keep hope alive. Yes. Because the little boy that's deep down inside of me is hoping, is longing, and desiring to see some proof that my daddy loves me too. Amen. Amen. You might be saying, Pastor B, how can, can you come up with that conclusion? Well, what are you basing it on? Even though this story takes place during biblical times, the people we are referring to were still just like us. Amen. And to get a good indication of how favoritism affected people back then, all I have to do is look at the way it affects people today. Amen. Because no matter what year you're born in, as a person, you still have feelings. Whether you were born in the year 2013 or at the beginning of creation, a child always needs to know that Meaning a considerable amount of time has passed 
and they're still a famine. The scripture also says enough time has passed for them to have eaten up all the food that they brought from Egypt. Now remember, each brother had a sack. And the fact that they were given an extra supply of food for their journey from Egypt to Canaan meant that they didn't have to touch the sacks of grain they bought until arriving back home. Amen. Right. Right. Yeah. Teach, teach. And chapter 43 lets us know the grain wasn't the only food they were depending on. Y'all stay with me. The land of Canaan was rich with spices, pistachio nuts, almonds, and honey. And the honey mentioned in this chapter is not the kind of honey we eat today. Research shows this was thick syrup made from grapes. So they also had an ample supply of grapes as well. It wasn't as if they were just eating grain. And I can picture Simeon putting tape marks on the ground, on the prison wall, to keep up with the days he's been left behind. Sitting there day after day, he's had plenty of time to think. He's probably thought about all the bad things he's done. He, and what a bad person he is. And, and he begins to believe that if his own daddy won't come back for him, he must be worth nothing. The ticks on the ground are a daily reminder that he's been left behind. He's still in the same predicament. Everyone else has moved on. His brothers are all free while he still remains in captivity. Nothing has changed in his life. And sitting in that prison, I can imagine his hope begins to dwindle. And I know there's a Simeon or a Simeonette <laughs> under the sound of my voice today. Maybe you've been affected by favoritism. You spent your whole life trying to be approved, trying to win the approval of mama, daddy, and other people, doing things good or bad just to get somebody's attention, not feeling loved or feeling like you even mattered at all. Or maybe you feel left behind. You feel like everybody else already has theirs. Everybody else is smarter. Everybody else is prospering and moving forward. God has already given everyone you know their assignment but you. Everybody seems to know what their mission is and they're walking in it with power and authority. But you feel like you're still in the same place you were last year. It feels like you've been left behind. Right, right, right. That's good. Sometimes you feel like you're the tail instead of the head. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you feel beneath and not above. And you can't figure out why God hasn't come to see about you. And you know he's your father. Right. So why hasn't he come back for you? And you've got mental ticks in your memory. Because you've been counting the days yeah. probably just like Simeon. Uh -huh. Well, scripture tells us that eventually when the food Joseph had earlier given his brothers ran out. Their father reluctantly agreed to send Benjamin back to Egypt with his brothers. After what probably seemed like a lifetime of waiting, Simeon is finally released. Joseph reveals his identity and an emotional reunion takes place between him and all of his brothers. Amen. When Simeon was finally released and reunited with his brothers, it probably wasn't as important to him that his father delayed in sending Benjamin as it was that his father finally did send Benjamin. Amen. Amen. And God sent me here with a word just for you today. He knew you'd be sitting here thinking he's forgotten you. He knew you'd be sitting here thinking nobody cares, feeling unfavored and left behind. He knew you'd be sitting here waiting to be approved and counting down the days for proof that somebody loves you. He said to tell you that before the beginning of time, before you were even born, he looked into the future. He saw you. He fell in love with you and adopted you. He saw you sitting in prison, guilty of sin, and because he loved you so much, he looked at his only begotten son and said, son, I need you to go down there and give your life in exchange for them so they can come back home to me. And he did it all because he loves you and favors you. God doesn't show favoritism. Because he's not a respecter of persons, nor has he left you behind. Because
because he said he would never do what? Leave you nor forsake you. No, he has brought you forward. He hasn't right. left you behind. Right. He's brought you forward. Yeah. Your father has already sent your brother in exchange for you, and his name is Jesus Christ. So if you're still being held captive, it's because you've chosen to allow captivity to keep you. Oh. Don't allow the enemy to hold you any longer. That's right. God may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. Yes. Yes. So you can choose to speak life, or you can choose to speak death while you're waiting. It's your choice. Let me point something out to you. I can imagine Simeon thought that his brothers were probably better off than he was. Check this out. But actually, he was in a much better position. Because he was surrounded by abundance, prosperity, food, and his brother's love. But he probably couldn't or didn't appreciate where he was because he may have been more focused on being left behind. Y'all get that. Instead of focusing on where you're not, focus on where you are. Begin to appreciate where God has allowed you to be now. And learn from it so you can Simeon was already where his brothers were coming. That's right. That's right. My, my, my. Y'all didn't get it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Let me say it one more time. Simeon was already where his brothers were coming. But couldn't recognize that he was because he may have been focused on his immediate surroundings. Right. Yes, yes. Not thinking about the surroundings that were around his immediate surroundings. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> Let me do it this way because y'all still ain't getting this. I'm <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at others wishing oh for what they have. Uh -huh. Not realizing they're also desiring to get what you have and where you are. Because they need to be where you are. They need what you're surrounded by, but you don't get it because you're still sitting here feeling in your feelings left behind. You can't base stuff on how you feel. That's right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, we can walk by faith, but not by sight. sight. Thank you. Yeah. Simeon didn't realize it, but he was sitting in the midst That's of luxury. abundance, the lack of luxury. Yeah. And his brothers were in need. That's why they were coming back to Egypt. Right. So he had everything. My he already had it. Christians, church folk, harvesters, we already got it. When you become a child of God and give your life to Christ, he is our heavenly father. We are his children. We are co-heirs with Christ. We already got it. You gotta believe it. You gotta receive. 